Hey gang, good to see everybody, and good to be posting. I haven't done anything in a while. Today, I'm going to do a little quick introduction before we actually get some video footage. What we're talking about, the actual product, is a roll around, um, for lack of a better word, uh, infrared space heater. You know, it's a little box unit. You've seen those, um, I think Eden Pure is the popular ones that got it started that they charge so miraculously huge chunk of change for. Anyway, I ran across this puppy at some store for like 120 bucks or something and I did a quick look up on it on my cell phone and I'm like, well, it gets pretty good reviews. We'll get it. Let's try it out. So I bought it. got it home. Uh, I bought a little, uh, a little kilowatt plug in the wall meter so I could monitor the current usage on it as well as the kilowatt cost. You can program in your and it seemed like that. I mean, that winter we saved about 30 bucks a month. Now, mind you, of course, I was uh, using the house furnace very little, except for in the morning. We'd get up and I'd fire it up and take the chill off the house. But the rest of the time, uh, we for pretty much for that year used that unit. Now, I know savings is theoretical based on temperature and what you're getting, what you're not. So it's it's a relative term. I know we won't get into that. But 80% of the time, we live in the kitchen and the living room, which is right next to us here. And it's just a big open room all tied together. The other 20% we're sleeping. Uh, that's when we're in the house. So um, it worked out great and it did a good job and we were very happy with it. And then it broke. <laughs> the uh, it, it broke intermittently. Um, turns out the unit has a faulty thermal limit switch in it and it'll work sometimes and then it will act like the unit overheats when it's not overheating uh, which I've tested and measured while it's running and the unit is not what it is written up to be uh, we're going to talk about false advertising and lying to the public to make a buck um, this is the epitome of the what would, would have been the old school Chinese knockoff ripoff uh, <laughs> And, and that's that's the first thing that popped in my mind. And I went and looked, and it's made in China. But and granted, their quality, of their stuff has gone up a thousandfold uh, since the 40s, 50s, 60s, whatever. I will uh, show you exactly what is not right with it. So stand by to have a little fun. Good afternoon, everybody. Today we're going to continue on from the last little bit that we spliced in here and disassemble and take apart and look at all the fun bits inside the roll rounds space heater that we were talking about in the last clip. Now, I know I said that we would be, uh, I'd be editing in some older clips I did over the last year or so, but I decided to forego that and just start fresh and we could poke with reason and intent instead of just taken apart and it wasn't very well organized so it's gonna be a little bit more fun now the heater is designed uh, sales from a sales angle to be similar to the Eden pure design that you see on television now, this is just uh, I'll use a, this is a size example this is just a, a kilowatt plug in the wall meter so that gives you an idea for size of the unit now, the Eden Pure, I believe, uses three um, infrared lamps, and technically the data sheet on this model supposedly has four. Anyway, so you can see it's fairly nice looking design and has a digital uh, front on it. And you can look in here, it has a nice coppery glow to it and uh, kind of a fireplace little look to it. And Oscar is all excited about the, making the video. so what's going on up here. It has the uh, the filters in the back. It's a uh, has a little clip that is screws in down here, holds the base in, and it just tucks in the top. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. And it is, as you can see, a thin foam type filter. You can clearly see on the back, which will come into play. I'm not sure how clearly it's I mean, uh, focus as well as we'd like. Uh, it says Renew. 1500 watt life smarts brand a renew 1500 watt infrared heater model number ls-hptc 
15 PB. Now the HPT, HPTC will come in uh, interesting here in a bit for identification reasons. And infrared heater clearly states there. <laughs> you got to love it. Now, so uh, covers on each side that pop off as well as the filter on the back and the plate here. And you can see the, the control wires going to the front. Now they did use, you'll notice, uh, I didn't notice it before, all the wiring in here is the braided uh, heat resistant type wires. You can get that feel to it too. That's pretty nice. We have, um, we have a, looks like a shaded pole type motor. All it has is a coil and the motor here, and there is no capacitor in sight. Actually, it kind of looks like a, a mini PTAC that you'd find in a, like a rent house of unit above, a, installed above the, the bathtub. Ugh, give me shivers thinking about working on those darn things. And uh, it's really well laid out for the most part. Again, we have the motor here, and we have uh, three wires going to the heating section here. We have a common in the center, and you have uh, heat one and heat two. Over here we have a, a limit switch, uh, a temperature limit switch, thermal limit switch, if you will. It is uh, auto resetting. There's no button on it. Main power comes in here. Uh, ground wires straight to the chassis, and we have three wires on the power switch. They're incorporating the <clears throat> the common and the power lead, and then when you flip it over to switch the power out, it still has a common tied in to power the, the light on the front and uh, without having to achieve ground or anything through the chassis. You will notice here we have a, a, this little booger here is a tilt switch. Kind of an odd bell shape to it, but uh, two wires on it. We have uh, three relays in here, two for the heat, 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 and I'm assuming the smaller one is for the fan. And everything's clearly labeled on the board, but we have a fan down here, and then we have heat, heat, we have uh, AC line in, and then we have uh, the line common in the transformer set. This is a very good example of a normal heater uh, that you would find in a house. Now, granted, the heating unit is totally different. This is uh, this is not normal resistive heating, and we'll get to that here shortly. But the basic design idea is you have, uh, in this case, what we would call two heat strips, and you have your thermal limit switch. We have a black wire coming down here, and goes into an odd-looking little structure down here. You'll notice. And you're like, what in the world is that? So I kind of peel that back, and uh, lo and behold, it has a small little thermocouple probe in there, uh, or temperature sensor, if you will. So this would be the room temperature sensor, so that it's pulling fresh air into the box cage here kind of swirling it around a little bit and gets the baseline temperature down there. It's not highly accurate, I've got to say, but uh, like any thermostat, you know, once you have it set where you want it, uh, you understand, okay, I just want it a little cooler, a little warmer. But uh, the thermocouple has a two-wire plug-in right there at the top, and then we have uh, the main plug outlet to the right of it, this blue and white and black set which comes out and goes to the front for the control board setup. Okay, so we can walk through it a little bit. We have, uh, we have the system plugged in, and we have it turned on and have a call for heat. And when you have the call for heat, goes through the control board, comes into play, and it says, okay, let's, uh, let's fire the heat in the blower up and it does that through the two relays here for the heat and the single relay down here for the fan and you can see the fan obviously kicks through these two wires here rolls around over here and engages the uh, the blower motor and then the two heats we have an orange and we have a brown we have uh, let's let's take a look at how the limit switch is wired in for this particular case. We have two brown wires and a limit switch. One of them 
if we follow it here, goes down and plugs into, into one side of the tilt switch. So, so we have the second safety going along here. And the back side of the tilt switch, we have an orange wire coming off of. The orange wire here is plugged into the bottom of the switch. So that's where our power starts. So our power comes, once the switch is flipped on, out through the black wire goes to the orange, which goes through the tilt switch, which is our first safety system. So if the unit is sitting upright, not knocked over, the unit will come on. If it's tilted over, it won't. And then, then it goes to the brown wire, goes up through our, our safety here. And if the limit switch says, OK, we're closed, uh, there's no overheating problem, it would go ahead and pass the voltage through it. Now this is 120 volts in this case. Sometimes you'll see these in low voltage uh, situations, and sometimes they use them in high voltage. This one's just high voltage. So we have the power coming off of it, still a brown wire, and the brown wire here, you can see, we'll wiggle it, goes to the far, far end over here. So the far end over here, as we come back over here and look, is the AC line in. So we have AC line power in. Now that we know the unit's not tilted over and the unit is not overheated, then the unit will fire up, uh, meaning power the control board. So failure from either one of these switches cuts power the control board. So at this point, we had to turn the heat on, and the heat is engaged uh, through heat one and heat two in the fan. It runs the sequence. And we have an orange and the brown heat wires here. The, we have the, the brown here, which is going to the bottom heat. And then we have the orange, the middle one here, which goes to the top. And then we have the common in the middle, which comes down and is tied here. See, they tie all the commons together in one place here. Uh, line common from the wall, uh, tied to the switch common which is tied to the common here. And the switch common also, on this one here, runs over and plugs to the board. The board common also has a piggyback on it, as you can see, and goes to the common on the motor over here. So all the commons tied together nice and neat in one place. And then, of course, like I said, the ground to the chassis. So we fire it all up, and everything works nicely and we should have some heat output. All right, boys and girls. I you know, probably should ask, like, do y'all hate that? Or I always say boys and girls. I don't think about it too much. All right, so let's look at uh, the kilowatt meter. We have it set. It is uh, 122 volts. And let's walk through the menu maybe for kicks. Um, I have a dollar value set up on it so I could track how much it's costing me. And uh, my rate here, 11.4 or 0.114. And then has, uh, I believe that's kilowatt hours. I can't get my eyes on it. And elapsed time in hours. And then back to volts again. And it has some other settings on it. But right now we have nothing going on. Let's uh, cut the power on. All right here, an audible beep. But it's got to be, oh, I forgot to mention, it does have... A, uh, a little fuse, a little glass fuse, soldered in, hardwired, isn't that lovely? Hardwired a fuse on there. I guess at least it's there. All right, we have the power on. You can see it's glowing. You can physically see the uh, LED is lit up there. And the unit is turned off. Now, when you turn this one on, it immediately jumps to uh, 86 degrees as a default temperature. But let's crank it down a little bit for fun and uh, set it to about 80. Yes, I know. Isn't it exciting? What about you? You think it's exciting? She's having a good time watching. So we'll set it to 80. The fan sounded like, uh, let's turn it off. Alrighty, we're back and I grabbed both my fuel piece meters and, uh, oop, what am I doing? I'm grabbing, <laughs> clamping them on the wrong spot. Uh, let's see, let's clamp this one on the orange wire here. We'll clamp this one on the brown wire here. So we have power one and power two. And you know, it's not going to be super accurate, but it is what it is. 
obviously I have uh, a little meter discrepancy, but uh, for what I'm using for it's pretty good. Okay, so let's come back over here, and we have the unit is shut off. So we're going to cut it on, and we know the fan cuts on pretty quick. So let's uh, listen for the beeps and see if we can hear the relay clicks, and then we will watch the uh, action here. Ah, so here we go. So they both kicked on pretty quick together, the fan. And you can hear the two relays kicking in. And we're pulling, uh, it's warming them up. Looks like about 5 amps. And it's, it's interesting that they are stepping up in amperage. And we'll get to that in a minute here, uh, talking about the unique heat setup this thing has since it's obviously not infrared. <laughs> but uh, there we go. So we have we have it uh, clicking along there. Come around the front. It's maxed out a little about a little over 5 and uh, 88. The temperature is doing pretty good here. Grab my uh, handy dandy temperature. Now let's uh, do a baseline of say a towel here is 70-ish degrees and then run the air conditioner. Back here, still 70, input 71, uh, still running 5 to 5.4 ish. Uh, output is 120 ish. Alright, down here, still 70 ish. So 124, 125. Like, let's come in at a check down here again. Cool it off a little bit. Alright, that's my. The tip of it in the heat, and I shouldn't have done that. So 74 there, and uh, 120, let's say 130, 125, 130, roughly, and still back here 73. -ish. So pretty good, uh, pretty good jump. 130-ish, so pretty good. So 60 degree. Uh, Rise is pretty good. Did I do that right? 85, 95, 115, 25, 135. Yeah, 60-degree rise, which is uh, pretty good, considering. And we're still sitting at about 5 amps each, so 10 amps total draw. And uh, let's see, clip around the white one here, see what we get. Yep, so 11.3 off the common. So it gives us a good base there. We can put it on our uh, line here, going through our safety as well, and get uh, about the same. Just depends on exactly where we place it. So, very good. Now, we will see uh, what happens. We cycle it down a little bit. Back over, and we're going to crank it down to, I'll just keep... Ah, okay. Dropped it down low enough. Both been kicked out. The fan is still cooling. The temperature in here is, let's see, 72 ish. It's cooling off. Still uh, 90s, so it's still dissipating, uh, dissipating heat off of the uh, heating elements and the inside section here. Pretty good. Okay, so. Uh, and for fun, let's do this. Ah, the tilt switch does work. Automatically cut it off. And uh, just cuts everything off. Beautiful. All right. Well, let's get on to the next bit. But that was pretty informative. We, we learned uh, what kind of amperage draw we were getting off of it. We learned the temperature uh, differential from the intake and the output which was very significant for uh, for the little thing and uh, actually had pretty, quite a bit of air off of the nice blower wheel and uh, we know the tilt switch works the safety I didn't test that all right kiddos I have uh, shut the unit off and unplugged it and everything oh by the way it does come with a remote now even though I'm fixing a dog on it a little bit I will say the unit has worked terrifically for me and saved me money and all kinds of other good stuff. 
But the fact of the matter is that uh, their false advertisement well, it was intentional or not, but uh, uh, lying little bastards and they covered their ass the best way they could. Try and find the manual for this online. Good luck. It is magically disappeared off of the manufacturer's website. Now, as we discussed earlier, it was supposed to have been an infrared heating system. Well, you can tell it's not. And look at the heating elements here. I pull the whole assembler assembly out here, as you can see, and it looks a little odd. Well, the, this is where the model number comes into play, the, uh, the HPTC part of it. It's a PTC heater, which is a positive temperature coefficient heater or heating element, which are actually, it's the ceramic stone parts inside of it, it's the actual heating part of it. Now I'm just going to read, uh, I have a web page opened on it, uh, so I can explain it clearly without uh, misrepresenting it. Positive temperature coefficient heating elements are small ceramic stones with self-limiting temperature characteristics. PTC stones have fast heating response time and plateau once the predefined reference temperature is reached. It is possible to form the stones into squares, rectangular circles, etc. Above the reference temperature, the semiconducting and ferroelectrical properties of the ceramic are utilized to produce a rise in resistance of several orders of magnitude and thereby creating a self-limiting properties. So in other words, if the characteristics of these particular stones was set to give you a maximum temperature of 140 degrees, it would be physically impossible for them to go over. Uh, even if the blower motor theoretically died, now you can research this, theoretically if the blower motor died, it would still only heat up to 140 degrees because once it reaches that point, the resistance goes up so high that it cannot pass the electricity, cannot, cannot pass the current through it to, to keep going. Uh, hey, don't believe that stuff he's saying down there about the temperature. Wait until he proves it. I'm going to make him do a test without the blower on the next couple of videos and prove it. might heat up and burn up a normal uh, resistive element that's they theoretically is not going to happen with these so uh, as it says the rise in resistance is experienced within a fairly small temperature window of a few degrees centigrade the attribute of the PTC results in the heating element that self-regulates to a preset temperature and automatically varies its wattage in order to maintain that preset temperature so that comes into play when we were watching the amperage go up on the unit a while ago over here, it was uh, instead of just clicking on like a normal resistive, you know, if you you put that on a regular resistive heater, uh, say a five kilowatt strip, you'd have got 20 amps and bam, it had been on and bam, it had been off. But this worked its way up to where it needed to be. So um, really, really kind of an interesting design. So um, where am I at it? In a given application, a greater degree of thermal dissipation or cooling will result in a lower resistance being maintained by the element. This effect increases the power output of the heater during operation in colder temperatures. Inversely, as ambient temperature increases and less heat is dissipated, the resistance of the element will increase, culminating in a near zero current draw as is designated temperature. So it it is kind of, as it warms up in the room, it takes less power to run the thing, which is really unique. I'll try and put the uh, the web page here in the show notes. And uh, let's click over to, now they sell this LifeSmart unit and a bunch of others all over the place, but this particular LifeMart, LifeSmart unit, this with that serial number, is sold all over the freaking place. And uh, they don't go out of their way to change the advertising. Now, I don't know if the new ones that they ship um, are they're still misadvertising them, but um, with that serial number, and this is what you're still getting or not. But uh, the website here, uh, this particular one, I'm on. Oh, it doesn't matter. I was on uh, a, a bunch of big name brand websites and some that weren't. And uh, golly, 
and it doesn't matter, but let me read some of the specs on this. Four commercial grade quartz heating elements. Even pure heaters have only three. That's what it says in their advertising. And I don't see any quartz heating elements, do you? No. Uh, no quartz heating elements. <laughs> oh, 25,000 hour lifespan, okay. Four, oh, I love this part. Four copper heat exchangers promoting fast heating. Uh, four copper heat exchangers. Hmm. Hmm. Four copper heat exchangers. Four copper. Oh, hey, there's some copper. Uh, oh, wait. It's just a little sheet that's screwed in the top and the bottom to make it look pretty and nothing below it. Huh. Funny. So... So we have got no quartz lamps, and we have uh, no quartz lamps, no copper heat exchangers. Reduces energy consumption 35 to 50%. It does do pretty good there. Uh, electric costs average $1 a day. I don't remember what my average was, but it was, it was pretty very efficient. And um, it does a lot of the other stuff. Let's see if there's anything else in here. Dual heating power levels. Actually, this is much better than dual. So, honestly, I've got to say it's probably a lot more, maybe more efficient. I, I, I like the safety of it better um, than a regular resistive, I mean, re regular electric resistive heating. Uh, so, it's pretty cool. Um, the lifetime washable filter, yes. Six-foot power core, electronic thermostat. Uh, the thermostat's a little hinky, but once again, once you get used to setting it, I'll set it on the low 60s, and it keeps work. I set it where I need it, and it works all right. Now, right now, the problem with this particular, it, it behaved for the test, but mine, this switch is bad, and um, and I didn't, I, I picked up the wrong switch. I picked up a variable, but I uh, accidentally picked up a normally open instead of a normally closed switch, so I've got to pick up another one and and uh, get that fixed out. Let's see, anything else in here? Lead display, forecasters, dimensions, color, blah, blah, blah. So anyway, um, that's the beauty of the whole thing. But but the the advertising, and I was checking some, I was on, I was on Amazon. I did, uh, I was reading some reviews on Amazon, and I think I might even posted something on there. But uh, some guy posted a little video, and because uh, he had bought um, one of the, fancy quartz ones, the, uh, oh, what was it down here they were talking about? The, um, oh, the Eden Pure for himself, and he bought a cheaper one for his mother or mother-in-law, and then was thinking, because it's supposedly better, and said the heat was different, and uh, he took it apart and realized, <laughs> we've been robbed! <laughs> so, uh, but no, that's, it's really, really interesting. So, but uh, short of that, I've, I'm highly impressed with it. And it's an amazing piece of uh, technology, and we've had a lot of fun. We learned something, I don't know about you, but I learned something new. Now, you notice this is a, like a plastic, ABS plastic type material, so which really does lend you to the understanding that this has a maximum temperature that it reaches. Now, I'm not sure what this particular one is, but we were shooting 135, so uh, it's whatever it is, it's got to be within range. So we learned uh, about a new type of heating element that I'd never heard of, um, hadn't researched before. Uh, a lot of you guys may have. Um, we got to work through the cycle of how the unit works, how it kicks on, kicks off, um, and this particular one, how it's pulling power. Now, normal electric heat. Now, this is just a lot like a normal electric air handler would be. Um, Air handler being terminology if you're not an HVAC guy instead of saying furnace. Uh, we call electric things air handlers and gas things furnaces. So, and uh, I'm not from up north, so I don't know what they call uh, oil heaters and stuff. But, uh, but basic design on this is very similar to an electric air handler. So it gives you a basic uh, understanding of, uh, of how things work. Well, anyway, that's it. I'm going to go back there and edit this together. And I will try to remember to post uh, uh, some links in the show notes down below. And apologies for having such a long, long time between videos. And I will explain all that at a later time why I haven't uh, been around. But uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the show.